are back and we are going to be sharing our postpartum journey. I have you guys up on my window seal right now. Um, I am seven weeks postpartum today. I cannot believe it's been seven weeks. It has flown by. Um, I am back to work. Thankfully, I own my own business so I can create my own hours and I actually don't have to spend like the entire day away from my newborn. Um, so I thought I would just share my birth story. I would share what the recovery has been like and what fitness is going to look like for me right now. So for me, this is what six and a half, oh wait, no, we decided I was seven weeks postpartum. Um, I'm going to put up on the screen right here a picture I took one week and then three weeks postpartum. I'm wearing the same outfit. It's just amazing how the mass in the stomach just like shrinks and goes down on its own. And once I felt like my body was ready to move again, we went on short little walks like 10 minutes and just progressed day after day, depending on how my body was feeling. And then, like I said, I started the diaphragm breathing, really trying to repair my abdomen wall, my pelvic floor. And I did start lifting weights again around uh, six weeks. Yeah, six weeks. I was back in the gym very light light work again you have to honor your body at this time it's really important that you don't let your ego get in the way and you take it slow so let's talk about the birth story they're really not kidding when they say those last couple weeks of pregnancy your belly will double in size it's amazing to watch your body recover postpartum the human body is amazing women are amazing with just the whole process of pregnancy was just an experience. So I wanted to have a natural birth as much as possible. So I did have a doula, highly, highly recommend. They are just there to help advocate for you and answer questions and just make you feel good, right? I was texting her all these questions all the time and she was just always reassuring me, always making me feel good. Um, so I had Kai August 30th. But um, Monday, August 28th, I felt like he wasn't moving as much. And, you know, I could have just been in my head a little bit. But I texted my doula and we tried, you know, eating and drinking a bunch of sugar, carbonated things, and laying on my left side to see if we could feel him move. And she wanted him to move so many times within, I think it was 30 minutes. Yeah. And if he didn't, I should probably go into the hospital just to get him checked out. So at this time, it's like 7 or 8 p.m. Monday, August 28th, and he did not move as many times as she wanted, so she recommended that I do go into the hospital, you know, just to be safe. So we did. We went to the hospital where I was planning to deliver, and long story short, he passed all his tests. He looked great on the monitor. But when I did lay on my left side, he was not happy. He was happy He was happy when I was on my back. He was happy when I was on my right side. So, you know, maybe the cord was just in an awkward spot when I laid on my left side. So it was really my option if I wanted to stay in the hospital or go home. But they tell you if you choose to go home, you have to sign this piece of paper. If anything were to happen, blah, 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 it was your idea to go home. So you're responsible, right? So they kind of put that little bit of fear into my head, which made me not want to go home. So I decided to check into the hospital and just be monitored. So they hooked me up to the monitor. They hooked him up, um, just monitoring his heart rate. So I was pretty much bed bound. The only time I could get up and off the monitor is if I need to go to the restroom. So that was a little tough for me, especially being active. I mean, Sunday, Actually, Monday, before we even went to the hospital, Monday morning, I was at the gym. So very active. So not having the option to just get up and walk around was really tough. Uh, but it was for the safety of the baby. So we were just sucking it up. So, you know, he was great Monday night. We didn't see any dips in his heart rate. Nothing strange. Nothing weird was going on. And at this point, I was only three centimeters dilated. So come Tuesday morning... They wanted to start Cervidil, which is almost like this tampon thing that goes, 
um, you know, and it's supposed to help dilate because if I'm in the hospital, you know, we kind of want to get things rolling and not just waste time. We were kind of just sitting there watching the grass grow, but I wanted to have a natural birth as much as possible. So, you know, nothing really happened on Tuesday. Didn't really change in dilation after having the cervidil. So come Wednesday morning at 3 a.m., they were like, we want to start Pitocin. Me personally, I was really, really against Pitocin. I've just heard some horror stories. Um, so I was really nervous when they said they wanted to start Pitocin. And I just kind of asked if we could take it slow. And they had no problem, you know, granting me my wish. So 3 a.m. we started Pitocin and we started a very slow drip. Again, Pitocin is just to get labor started, help you dilate, and just get the process rolling. So come about like 12.30, the nurse comes in, she checks me, and she's like, okay, maybe you're four centimeters dilated. So been in the hospital since Monday night, and I've only dilated a whole a, another centimeter. So I was kind of feeling a little bit discouraged and the nurse decided to keep me off the monitor and she said just walk around the room and you know within five minutes of walking around the room i just felt a like like a pop and i looked at my husband and i was like oh my gosh i think my water just broke i didn't have like that gush of water that like some people talk about but i went to the restroom and i was like yep definitely my water broke and it just seemed like instantly it was on, like the contractions were there. So we text the doula and we're like, yes, I'm in labor, you know, please come. <laughs> and it was really nice once she got there, she was able to show Pep, my husband, like just different positions and things he could do for me to help when those contractions came because I wanted to have a natural birth. Um, I had no pain medicine, so he was just helping with the pain management and I'm not gonna lie, like, those positions and the things we were doing actually helped so much. So I'm very thankful she was there. We started pushing, the doctor came in about 4.30 on Wednesday and we had Kai at 5.41. It was great, it was a beautiful experience. We then did skin to skin and I even got to feel his heartbeat on the umbilical cord before we clipped it. It was just so beautiful, so magical. I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I'm so thankful. He was healthy, I was healthy, and I really got to have the natural birth that I wanted. I thank God for that every day. And then, let's see, we got discharged 24 hours later. <laughs> I am going to start with a little pelvic floor rehab right now. During birth, your, or during pregnancy, I should say, you can experience diastasis recti. I butcher that every time I try to say it, so I'm putting it up on the screen for you. Um, but it's pretty much the separation of your abdomen, and it's just your body making room for the baby. So it's very important after birth to rehab those muscles and rehab your pelvic floor. Um, we're going to start with diaphragm breathing. The stomach rather than the chest moves with each breath. You're expanding while inhaling and contracting while exhaling. When you exhale, that belly button should come down in towards the spine and you're really connecting with those abdomen muscles again. Your body might shake a little bit. Next up are the heel taps. These are a little more advanced. Before you lower your leg, make sure to exhale, really drawing your belly button towards your spine. You will lower one leg, tap your heel on the grass, then perform it on the opposite leg, and then you will inhale, fill up the stomach, and go again. Next, we're gonna do glute bridges, and you're gonna wanna squeeze something between your legs to activate your pelvic floor. We're gonna make sure we exhale before we drive our glutes up to the ceiling and everything is tight. Next, we're gonna do bird dog crunches, but I'm on all fours, and I'm just showing you some more diaphragm breathing. You can see that I'm exhaling, drawing my belly button in towards my spine. And when I inhale, my belly gets nice and big, full of the air. This is really great to reconnect with your pelvic floor and abdomen muscles. So now let's move on to the bird crunch. You're gonna reach out, 
inhale, exhale, reach out, opposite arm, opposite leg, inhale, exhale. These are really challenging, great for your shoulders and your core. I will admit my body starts shaking like while I'm doing those core exercises. It's quite humbling coming back to the gym after pregnancy, even though I worked out my entire pregnancy, I can definitely feel it. So listening to my body, taking it easy, and I'm not lifting weights and performing an exercise if I cannot squeeze my core and stay tight while performing the exercise. That's like the number one thing. You want your core engaged while you're lifting weights, especially during postpartum. Well, I forgot to close out the vlog while I was at the gym recording that core workout. So here we are in the kitchen making our little closing clip for this YouTube video. And I just wanna say, take into consideration that it took, what, 40 weeks to grow your pregnant body. So give yourself grace when you return to fitness and the gym postpartum. Please don't expect to bounce back overnight or within a couple months. Give yourself grace, give yourself time, take it slow, enjoy the process and listen to your body. You went through a lot of trauma bringing a human life into this world. So when you approach your workouts, do what feels comfortable. Um, you know, you could be following somebody's video, they're recommending uh, a workout postpartum. If it doesn't feel comfortable for you and your stage of recovery, don't do it. You have to listen to your body right now. And if the weights don't feel comfortable, just start by going on walks and doing light movements, body weight, um, every little bit counts. So please follow along on my YouTube. I want to share my journey with you and share my workouts and hopefully um, just be a light for you. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and comment below what you want to see. I'd be happy to help you on your postpartum journey or wherever you're at on your fitness journey. Thanks.